So let's uh, please call uh, ATID number one meeting to order. And uh, this is uh, Chairman Kendall Miller. And uh, the first item is the roll call. Um, please raise your hand or uh, say aye if you are in attendance. Uh, first uh, item on the roll call or person is Jeff Bowden. Jeff, not present. You may check in a little uh, bit. Uh, next is Todd Casper. Aye. Uh, Gerald Crump. He's not scheduled. Uh, Sun Sonny Giles. Here. Tom Kyler. Present. Uh, Steve Warner. Here. Kendall Miller present. John Moose. Eric Tovic. Kurt Webb. I'm here. Jonathan Zadick. Here. Okay, and so I understand we do have a quorum. We do. Thank you, sir. All right, and uh, now we need to uh, ask the Uptown staff to please identify themselves. Delia Miswall. Uh, Amy Escalante. Shannon Daniels. David Wood. John Greeting. Betsy Cartard. Gerald McCain. Julio Gardman. Mike Williams. Robert Hobby. Magla Mitar. Okay, thank you. And are there any members of the public that need to identify themselves, please? This is Jessica Hollebeck with ADHR. This is Margaret Dunlap with Metro. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, thank you everybody for attending and identifying yourself. Please do so when you have something to say in terms of the meeting. Otherwise, uh, please keep your microphone on mute as much as you can. Um, that takes us, uh, if there's anyone who wishes to make comments from the public. None have requested. Okay, so that moves us to the next item to review minutes and ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. These were sent out beforehand. Does anyone uh, have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Learn, move. Zadig second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So that takes us on to the uh, next item, which is the quarterly investment report. Shannon, could you lead us through that? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Uh, on page five, uh, the first page of the quarterly investment report, this report period is January. 2021 through March 31st, 2021. The first page outlines the balances in our three general funds. In the operating fund, at the end of the reporting period, we had just over $7.1 million between Capital One, our primary depository, at $6.1 million, and BBVA Compass, which is our secondary depository, at a million. In our capital project fund, we did had uh, 4.7 million in the account with Capital One Bank, uh, just a small portion of leftover in Regions Investment. And then lastly, our debt service fund, which is with Capital One Bank, had just over $2.5 million at the end of the period. On page six, which is the second page of this report, we identify those deposits that require collateral and, uh, and or any our deposits with uh, BBVA Compass is ad adequately collateralized with the Federal Home Loan Bank letter of credit with BBVA. Likewise, our deposits with Capital One and all of the three funds, just over $13 million, have sufficient ca collateralization with uh, Capital One with treasuries and agencies of the U.S. government. Also, uh, for our investment report, we'd like to note that we are in compliance with training John Breeding as the investment officer and myself as an alternate. And lastly, uh, just a list of approved broker dealers and banks that we do business with. Are there questions or concerns regarding the report for the quarter? Okay, hearing no questions, let's move on to the next item, which is the uh, continuing disclosure policy. And I would like to hear about that from Stephen Wood and Jessica Hollaback, please. I'm going to ask uh, Jessica to take the board through the, the members' uh, continuing disclosure. 
Sure, I'm happy to do it. Um, I think is there any controlling the three repeated roles to this page labeled A4? I think we've gone too far. Just go uh, um, in our in, in our board book. It's going to be uh, tab two, page seven. Your continuing disclosure policy refers to all of the things that you're required to do to a covenant to sue when you have sold bonds to maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds. It's and it's um, governed by the SEC Rule 15 CC 12, um, primarily that's in place. You'll recall once a year we have a uh, annual report that you all approve and we file with the municipal security rulemaking board to update the disclosed information that had been contained in the prior official statement so that your bond holders can take a look and be curious for the financial health. We're updating your continuing disclosure compliance policy today because the rule 15 CC12 was updated to add two items to the list of material events that would require us to make a disclosure outside of that annual report. They're known as items 15 and 16. Um, the item 15 is if there's an insurance or financial obligation which affects your bond holders, we would need to disclose that. As well as if there is a default event, acceleration, et cetera similar events under a financial obligation of the district, which would affect your bond holders. We would then have to make a disclosure report to the NSRB. None of that is happening to you right now. The goal of this agenda item is just to update your continuing disclosure policy to reflect the full spectrum of material events you might be wondering why we have this policy, and the answer to that is occasionally the IRS does audit municipal security issuers, and it is good to have written policies and procedures that a person may have. Stephen, Can I answer any questions or? Given, given the quality of her audio, uh, or my bad ears, um, would you, the, the reality of this is that we're adopting standard format we're, we're, and we're, we're actually the, updating the standard and revised okay. policy. Right? We're, we're not filing anything. Right. This just says, I would assume there's been a couple of new things added to what we've been advised by ADHR that they, they handle all of our continuing disclosure filing that they're required to do as an issuer of municipal securities. And in their opinion, because as Jessica just said, whether or not you heard it or not, IRS expects you to have a policy like this. If you want to get audited, the person may ask for it. Uh, here we're adding two items, which are on page 12, to the uh, list of events that would trigger us to submit a material event report to the MSRB, which is the Clearing House Municipal Securities. That's the way that we keep our bondholders informed of what's going on. If, if, if we have a significant hit to our ability to continue to do paid debt service for some reason we're required to make a filing with the MSRB and they would inform the bond recording what, in progress what what things were added were the last the, the two, two dot I, yeah the, the two uh, bullet points on the last two bullet points on page next time we might just type up that to the yeah, you're right. so, yeah. so this is the my microphone does it help any it yeah. helps a lot yeah. not really it, well it no. takes it from un, Unintelligible to I could I could hear you. Um, I think Stephen's answered. Yeah, I think the I question. Think the, the report is sufficient between the two of us. Unless the board so has in summary, because I'm, I'm I'm clarifying this for myself. Purely administrative. We're adding two new rules that that, that would require us to make a report. This is not a report. This is just having a current policy. Correct. Sure. The chairman, if we could. If anybody's got a question, please ask. If not, uh, 
Uh, if there are no questions or any further discussion, do we have a motion to approve the two new items and amend the investment policy? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, a motion carries. And uh, Shannon, I guess we call on you on the next item to authorize the, the district yes. enter into a letter agreement. Yes, sir. Um, thank you. Uh, this year we went out for um, a request for proposal for audit services. We, I, I reached out to some of my counterparts uh, in Persia's and management district, as well as the city of Houston, who uh, maintains a list of PERS auditors to get a list of potential service providers. We sent RFPs to five firms and we received two proposals. I'd like to recommend to the board that we go, I'm sorry, I have to remember we have yeah. people. The screen doesn't yeah. vote. I'd like to uh, recommend that we go with CRI as a new auditor. They presented the best value for the services, as well as came with good recommendations from um, other management districts and purges, in particular downtown districts and purges uses CRI. They just recently switched in the, in the last year, as well as the Midtown uh, District and Redevelopment Authority. So they have experience with entities such as ours. No, no, we were not unhappy with Whitley Penn. We've been with Whitley Penn since I've been here. They were no Larrison and got um, consolidated or merged with Whitley Penn. They've been great. Um, I think it's, and I kind of reached out and asked some of my counterparts, you know, do you routinely go out for audit services? Uh, the answer was yes in some cases, and in one case they were unhappy. Some say they've been with the same auditor for a while. Um, I think I mentioned in our goals that we were going to go out for an RFP. Mr. Zadig, a couple years ago, asked about the cost or whatever. One time I did an informal, this was more formal. And so we're not unhappy, but I will say that uh, Walter uh, Whitley Penn came in 16% higher than what a, uh, than Carter Bridge, CRI. Okay. Well, that, that, listen, there, there's <laughs> some merit to changing know whether it's five years ten years I think so too and so while I'm a little nervous thinking okay got new eyes looking and asking a lot of questions I think it's a good thing yeah no I, I don't I just wanted to get a little bit of that history what had happened yeah thank you very much happened. could you go back to them and ask them to match the price I you know they I, I, I think they put their best foot forward. We have been working. They I, knew I for a while that we were going to go I out. I think it's fair team. to do what you did. Right. It's kind of like, uh, I remember, I won't name it, but if someone can't give you their best bid when they know they're competing for it, then they don't really necessarily should feel like they get a last shot at it. And, and I will say that from a policy point of view, I think it is healthy yeah. to have a different set of eyes looking at things mm -hmm. that maybe somebody else's eyes. I mean, you might not see or might not. It's okay focus. to have another set of eyes. Yeah, I, I just I simply. And they're qualified. I, 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 look, and, and I don't think that the, the dollar difference between the two uh, is four or $5,000. I don't think that's material. It, it, it making the selection as important as, a, uh, as an auditor. But I think having, uh, going through, having a fresh set of eyes, looking, if we find out that the, the Best, everything we can find out, these people are highly qualified to do a good job, and I think it's healthy. Uh, we do whatever the board would like, uh, but we, it is uh, Shannon's recommendation, and I concur uh, that we uh, select a I make a motion that we approve the letter with uh, CRI. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sean. 
All right, that takes us on to the uh, next item, which is the uh, budget presentation. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> and Chairman. John, before you start that, um, I am at 8% battery, so if I disappear, I will be back in three minutes uh, running down the hill and getting my son's phone and calling back in. So go ahead. <laughs> Would you like for us to text him and tell him to bring you a, a different phone? Uh, uh, no, don't let him move. He's, he's ready to go uh, if we need him. So okay. I've got 8%. And okay. You talk fast. Okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do that. Unfortunately, I have a couple of uh, lengthy issues to present, uh, but, but we'll get started. Uh, I, I am presenting to you today our proposed uh, operating capital and debt service budget uh, uh, for 21-22. Uh, uh, before we do, I want to go very quickly over our uh, FY 20, uh, 2020, 2021 uh, fiscal year budget. And, and just say, on pa starting on page uh, 16 of tab 3 will be that review. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, uh, that 2020 obviously was a very interesting year. And, and uh, what was going to happen, what values were going to be, what projects were going to go forward. Uh, were obviously very big questions. In the end, uh, we you can see we projected uh, it by year end to actually receive more tax revenue than what we had budgeted, uh, and we have spent more of that tax revenue than we had bu been budgeted. We were over had a revenue um, shortfall uh, fall versus expenditures of about one hundred and twelve thousand dollars about 1.5% of the total budget. And, and I think for an for interesting year, that's pretty close. Um, if you turn to page 17, that's a, basically about the same level of detail. We're just trying to make sure people that are on Zoom and people in the room can see both things. If I could get you to turn and look at our capital budgets, that's where you'll see some real discrepancy. We had hoped to do quite a bit this last year. But I think we were motivated by seeing what uh, uh, abnormal values were going to do. And, uh, and also, we were held up a bit by contractors uh, not on Post Oak Lane, not only uh, Center for Energy, a bit of some pandemic issues that were passed now. Uh, but uh, as you can see, we budgeted to spend maybe 11 million. We only spent 1.4 million, and a pretty significant variance there. Again, as we go through this, anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. On the following page, on page 19, you'll see sort of a detailed view of those individual projects or what we actually spent some money on. But the summary, I think, probably the answer is the, uh, the broader issue. Uh, and if I could get you to turn to page 20, which is our FY2021 projected budget fund balance summary kind of the, the state of the organization. We began the year in terms of operations with reserves of 5.95 million. We're ending the year with reserves of 5.873. Um, and, and it basically flows with uh, uh, a slide over expenditure um, uh, of the budget. In terms of capital, we started with 5.2. We didn't go out and borrow any money. We spent basically from that and ended up with a, a ending Cash balance of $3.8 million. Debt service basically is money in, money out for debt service payments. We started with 2861 and we're ending up with 2668. Uh, in, in total, uh, we're, the organization is in a good financial condition. Uh, essentially, the operating revenue uh, ending cash balance or can be our reserves amounts to what is almost a year's operation. So that's a true un, unspoken for reserve. That's, that's it, 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 and, and if I could get you turn to page 21, you'll see a, a little bit more information. Really replays perhaps a little bit more detail of that issue. But one thing I will point out, if you look down at the, uh, at near the bottom of the page, so the gray uh, toned area, you'll see that 5.873 million that I just talked about. But if you look at the very bottom of the page, that's where you know, we, we, we basically start a fiscal year in July, but we don't collect that year's revenue, tax revenue, 
until January, February, kind of finishes up by March. And so we have to live on that, quote unquote, reserve uh, for somewhere on the order of six to nine months. And, and so having a year's operating reserve it is, I think, uh, fortunate, but it is also turns out to be probably only maybe a third of the year that we really don't ever have to touch. So uh, and, and just sort of going on, if I could, I'd be glad to answer any questions about last year's budget, but uh, I'll start to begin printing this year's budget. I'll print it. Discuss it. Turning to page 22. Uh, interesting that all the way back uh, to the year 2000, tracking Avalon values in the area. Obviously, have, they have grown from $2 billion uh, way back in 2000 to something over uh, $6.4 billion uh, today. Uh, the, as you can see, that uh, I'm going to give you just a little bit of history. Take a look at what happened in 2008. 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, and that was some pretty serious uh, downturn. Uh, uh, we had we lost uh, somewhere north of five percent of our overall value, uh, and then had some pretty significant growth, which generated, uh, I think, litigation. People really started fighting their annual value, and you can see since 2016 that values have not gone up very much. And what this chart shows you is that uh, based on what we see in terms of uh, settlements, uh, we are forecasting a value for 2021. We're using it in our budgeting process, a $6.76 billion. Uh, and uh, that is a somewhere between what it was in 18 and 19. So we assume some of that was going away. The question is, when will that reappear? Uh, page 23 uh, is a sort of a uh, the numeric versions of that chart. And you can look at it if you want to. On page 24, uh, you will see uh, where we are actually calculating what we think the tax rate should be. This is for budget purposes only. You'll actually be asked to levy the tax. Shannon, I believe, usually in October uh, of the year, but th we think that this uh, is going to be what it will end up being. Uh, basically, we'll be taking our projected assessed value, applying a consistent tax rate. We did not reduce the tax rate, uh, and, and we only want to generate enough money to make the debt service payments. That comes out to about 4.9 cents uh, per $100 assessed value. And then if you'll go down the remainder of that, about 94 cents would be used then for operating uh, revenues, generating about $6.1 million. Um, could skip over probably the next one, and then I'm ready to start discussing the proposed budget. And again, I'll stop, but I'm going to keep going unless you stop me. I have not seen any suggestion within within governmental institutions to do that. Uh, I think that is always the case uh, that can be litigated, and uh, we have in the past had to pay uh, some of those funds back, but I don't think they are giving anyone a pass. They are the super. Yeah. I've heard not any more whisper of it. On page 26, again, I sort of said some of these points, I think, as went through the presentation. We're assuming Avalon value to be reduced to something like the levels we saw in 2018-2019. Uh, we assume there will be contingent litigation. Uh, we have, uh, Shannon, what was the number? Uh, about uh, $1.5 million of payback that we've had to do over the last five years. But that number has continued to decline. 
uh, and we are carrying about $100,000, I think, in the proposed budget for pay, uh, assuming a payback, uh, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, and But that kind of is a trend line that says that number is probably pretty good. No tax rate increase, no reduction as well. Operating budget, uh, we're proposing to reduce by about 6% from what we actually spent in FY21, given what property value is doing and, and uh, doing what we can to be as, as uh, prudent as possible. Uh, we are projecting uh, that our revenues will exceed expenditures of about $240,000. And it is not insignificant that we are, uh, are not including in this any salary adjustments for staff, nor merit pool. And we, this will be our second year that we haven't done that. And if you hear in that some pleading, uh, you'll, uh, you would be right. Uh, but I think our staff perform well. We understand the economic terms that we're in, but we had hoped if the economy proves itself in the coming year that we would be able to review that with the board of directors. Turning to page 27, uh, again, a very a simple look at, at the budget. Uh, the yellow is our proposed. Uh, the, on the left would be the end of year projected for the previous year. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're showing that revenue over expenditure is about 240,000. Fairly significant reduction in both maintenance uh, and traffic. Uh, we think uh, we can accommodate that because, uh, for example, on maintenance, which is our biggest line item, TxDOT is going to be re-landscaping the West Loop this coming year. So some of the things we would normally have done, we won't be doing. Uh, certain things we'd have to do for our holiday lighting program, we're choosing not to do uh, this year. And, and so those are things that we could move out of the budget and, and and still provide a very high level of service. It's our belief that what happens out on the street is our number one priority, whether that's in traffic management, public safety, or the way things look. Uh, turning on page 28, again, a little bit more detail of the same thing. Uh, the capital budget, uh, uh, we, we do propose to undertake some, uh, some significant projects. If I could get you to turn to page 30, uh, you'll see what uh, our uh, capital program for this coming year as well as a five-year capital improvement program laid out. We are doing a lot of things that needed to be done that we've held off. The district has the ability, has the financial resources to do more than it has and perhaps probably has more disposable uh, work than the management of the, than the church does. Um, and, and so some of the projects that we've held back on for the years we're wanting to go forward, just very quickly, our, our lighting on <coughs> our transit stops, on our stations, uh, we really want to upgrade that. It's a little bit too dim for uh, my uh, wife's use at night and or anybody else's, I think. Um, we also are, we, this board has already authorized uh, funds to do the Aspire sidewalks to complete Post Oak Boulevard, as well as the portion of Post Oak Boulevard from Fairdale to Richmond down near what is quote unquote the McNair property. Um, uh, we, there are certain things that we need to do to strengthen the infrastructure, to make our holiday trees and the lighting work more effectively. Uh, we're doing some uh, uh, a new, uh, Steve, would you help me with the term? Uh, the, Circuit breakers, acid freeze. Circuit old yeah. ones and, and so we're just really solving some problems that we didn't anticipate and probably should have done uh, when we built the trees in, in the very beginning. Looking for the opportunity to uh, lay out the groundwork for future projects like taking the water wall park and, lay, and doing a, a design for that that would bring that up. My goodness, it's uh, almost 40 years old. It needs certain refurbishment, primarily in the sidewalks, the lawn, uh, not necessarily so much in the water wall itself. Uh, we hope to begin um, the work to build a trail from uptown uh, underneath Buffalo Bio into Memorial Park. And, and just as a side note on this, 
we had uh, gone in, our, our U.S. Congressman Liz uh, Fletcher had sponsored a $4 million request we had uh, to help fund that project. She has uh, shepherded that through the House, uh, and in fact, our $4 million project is in the transportation bill, and uh, it is uh, now they're working out any differences between the Senate and the House. These projects are fairly small and probably below the type of things that get a lot of uh, scrutiny, uh, but it, we are anticipating that we're going to be blessed with a $4 million grant by the next spring. Um, also, we're very happy to say that uh, the mayor and city council named our little park at the corner of San Felipe and Post Oak Lane, the Martin de Brosnan Park. We're quite honored for that. Marty is a good man uh, who deserve, deserved that. And uh, we're bun part, uh, budgeting some funds. The family was willing to contribute some funds. And I thought we could put some money together to simply maybe to do something special there uh, for Mar Marty and perhaps even recognizing some of our other leaders on, on our board. Uh, let's see, greening Uptown Park, that's a completing a project that $220,000 is. Uh, we're gonna bring something to you here earlier. We we actually have to take care of the striping on the street and the crosswalks. We have gone out and solicited, solicited uh, proposals and that's just a, a fund that we'll spend this year and we'll likely have to spend within the next five years as well. Uh, our traffic uh, cameras uh, need to be updated. As you can tell, they are not working very well. They're not even on. I tried to turn them all on before the board meeting and the just communication systems uh, are quite old and, and want to update that. $200,000, we have a refurbishment of signal poles and, and street luminaires have been hit uh, by uh, cars uh, and then uh, we are proposing to you today as part of this is that we uh, want to replace the sign rings uh, that were over our major intersection uh, and I'll get into that later. Uh, the, and then the last one, $450,000 uh, there is finished up the Post Oak Lane project which has been ongoing and then we're looking to work with the city and the curves to do uh, drainage improvements to help reduce flooding. Those projects are then spread over the next five years. Uh, nothing at the moment is, if you're not authorizing me to go spend this money, this is recognition of these projects that we need to do. And uh, Mr. Chairman, we could always revisit those and, and press them. Uh, I got a question for Go right ahead. So if we say almost $10 million this last year in capital spend, that's not now flowing It's mostly projects that are in this budget now that didn't get started last year, that we simply held off on. The individual, there are very few actually new projects added to this. They're just basically carrying the funds over to this year. Not carrying funds over to this Mine, year, but starting them and going forward. Uh, and then, uh, again, I'll, uh, I'll jump quickly here to, uh, our fund balance summary that's projected for 21-22. Uh, starting out the year, it's at 5873 that we are projecting ending uh, previous year at, uh, and actually growing that a bit with our revenue over expenditures of about 240,000 will actually increase our operating reserve capital projects. Uh, again, we see spending money and, and uh, and what we are really looking to do is to take what funds we have available, work with a line of credit with a financing institution, and as we move these projects through, be able to borrow the money we need to make things happen. Again, we're not, we're not asking you to approve that financing today. That would be at a separate time. Um, I guess that is, the, that is the summary of our budget. Uh, I will tell you that the appendix, uh, Amy, uh, where would that be? The appendix would be in the next tab, and it's by line item, and you can go through there and see what we're spending on each line 
And I believe that's on page what? 36. On third, on page 36. And, uh, but this is sort of a common way that we do the budget and present it to you. If you have any questions, I'd be, I'd be happy to try to answer them. And if not, Mr. Chairman, on page 34 and 35 is our resolution adopting our operating capital and debt service budget for the 2021-2022 fiscal year and authorizing the bud budgeted expenditures and authorizing the president to distribute the district funds as approved by the board. Um, you can, the, the, the section three and four are the, probably the most significant, uh, talking about what we can spend money on and we continue a, a, a tradition of any checks uh, greater than $1,000 required. Two signatures, mine and someone else's, and I believe if it's with the board of directors, it takes three signatures. So um, that is our presentation for the budget, and I'd be glad to answer questions. So, yes, I think you mentioned a four million dollar grant maybe next year. Yes, is that reflected in here. It is. Yeah, level? the revenues reflected in there, and if I could go back to the more detailed. I'd turn back to page page 31. Uh, that would be on the parks and trails, and you would see 500,000 Buffalo Bayou West Loop Trail, 500,000 spent in FY 21, 22, and then the, the other two million dollars, four million dollars spent um, in 22, 23. 23-24, but we would do the design work this coming year, uh, and we will, like any grant, uh, it will actually flow through the Federal Transit Administration for us. We're a direct recipient, much like we did Post Oak Boulevard and other projects. Uh, it, we will have those funds to draw down, and we can only draw them as we need them, and so that's what we're saying. It's unlikely that we'll actually be in construction for the end of this fiscal year. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I turn the floor back over to you. If he's not here. There you are, Kendall. Sorry about the background noise. Um, do we have a motion to approve all of what we have reviewed? Sorry about that. Do we have someone moving the motion that we need to approve all that we just reviewed? So moved. Second. Sammy. All those? Thank you, Sammy. Sorry, Kendall. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, that moves us along to our next item. All right. Let me see what our next item is. The ring. Oh, my goodness. All right. Again, Kendall, I hope you uh, have a good connection that can see this. Uh, if I might, um, we are coming to you asking for authority, uh, and we, we have done research, we have designs, um, but we want to go out and actually uh, see if we can move and replace the sign rings that we don't, we no longer have along Post Oak Boulevard. Um, this is a, a very bad photograph, but a, a, a photograph taken off of a TV screen. And when uh, Sunday or Monday night football came to Houston, the iconic image that they used was this intersection. And uh, Delia was uh, quick enough uh, to uh, get a picture of it, but I think it says it's one of the signature looks uh, of Houston, of what people recognize as part of this city. Uh, we had uh, four of these along Post Oak Boulevard. We have an additional ring at West Hammer and Sage in Richmond and Sage, here at Uptown Park, San Felipe, uh, West Timer, uh, Hidalgo, and uh, those are the four along the boulevard. Uh, and because of the construction of the Post Oak Boulevard and its widening, these rings had to be taken down. So the real question is, 
are we going to put them back up? Well, there's a problem with that. Uh, I, I, I don't want to not let you look at that just think a bit. There does seem to be something missing. Um, when we when we widen Post Oak Boulevard, the image that you see on the screen right now, the, the yellow circles are where the gateway holes that hold the rings were located. So when we spread them out, what the new Post Oak Boulevard had to be, uh, the poles, uh, the angles changed, and, and simply the poles could not support the rings as currently designed and built. Our engineer said, and through a lot of effort, uh, said there were uh, three things that you need to do. You need to reduce the weight of the bed load of the ring. You perhaps most significantly need to reduce the wind load on the ring. Uh, and then because where the connections were and because the street has changed geometric, those places on the pole where those rings are actually, where the cables attach, have to be changed. So that all this has to be straight. And so we swallowed hard and, and, and went back and, and tried to find out what we have to do to make this work. By the way, we found out the same thing with our, our arches over Post Oak Boulevard. Uh, once we widened Post Oak Boulevard, we had to lengthen the arches uh, and we had to ser uh, significantly uh, modify uh, the foundations, uh, concrete, fill, uh, fill portions of the two to make them stiffer and safer. And we're seeing the same thing here that we have to do something about the rings. And so what kind of design would meet the criteria for the gateway side ring? What we knew is that we had to reduce the weight, reduce wind load, uh, less, less stuff, weighs less, and uh, no solid walls make the wind load much less. And so we looked at things like uh, fins and we worked with the designers who originally designed the rings, both the engineers at Walt C. Moore and structural engineering, and then Henry Beer uh, out of uh, Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we looked at uh, veins like this. We looked at using tubes. Uh, let's see, we began to move toward uh, having three pieces uh, of structure and, and trying to reduce the, the fins here in the middle, whether they're solid, they have circles, uh, you know, could we, could we open them up more? In the end, what we present to you is that we would, we would like for our, our rings to kind of really reflect something of this. Jonathan, I don't know if you sell. Jonathan, sell. did you? Did Jerry, you, uh, you don't uh, sell. You don't yeah. sell Winston's <laughs> things. Do you? you don't sell Winston's things, do you? I'm sorry. I know it was a bad move on my part. I hope you will still will think positive about this. <laughs> but the, but the, I will tell you, the designer's concepts here is that not only they want the idea that it really becomes more of a bracelet, more of a, a piece of jewelry, uh, that the facets of the diamonds actually get reflected in the, in, in the design as well as the tubes itself. And this is what they kind of came up with. I'll go through this in, in, in detail, but there, this would be a... a polished, uh, mirror finish, uh, eight inch tube at the top. The real structure of this, to this whole thing is that eight inch tube. Uh, literally, we could have hung the bottom ring with chains, but it looks beautiful. Uh, but the structure is in that tube. They are now, they are connected uh, with the fins, and I'll show you some details on that. And the fins are polished, portions of them are polished, and then this is a smaller tube of only about three inches. And uh, we try to do a couple of things here. The lettering is made up of individual can lights, mirror finish, finish, uh, polished. Uh, and again, sort of that, if you will, that etching, that engraving, the, the facet of a diamond is hopefully being reflected in what the letters look like. Uh, each one of these letters are attached, and so whether you're at Uptown Park Boulevard, Post Oak Boulevard, these are individual letters attached uh, to the, uh, the stainless steel ring itself. Uh, if you look at the pieces, the nuance of the fins 
is that we have found over the years that round, polished surfaces uh, do a horrible job of reflecting the light. And so our arches disappear at night. Our stainless steel disappears at night. But if you'll think about our Christmas trees, how those tubes almost glow like neon, it's simply that they have been etched, scratched or etched or sanded to give it a surface that literally the light is reflected off of that really perfectly. So on, these, on the fins, this in here will be a matte surface, media blasted, probably glass or shot. Um, and then the edges will be, uh, will be polished stainless, so you'll get a good sparkly daytime look. Uh, but one of the things we're doing here is actually uh, putting small upright spotlights that will sh shine onto the fins and you will be able to uh, use lighting on that and it really will show up. Um, LED lights, three inch tube, eight inch tube, seven and a half inch letters. Um, we built a uh, very short piece to kind of look, see what it would look like. You can again down at the bottom, see the, uh, the lighting, the fins. If you can tell in this photograph, basically that this is sort of a matte finish here versus the polished edges the polished here and in the individual letters. In the evening, as you can see, the, the stainless steel sort of disappears, uh, and but these individual letters are lit. We have a problem with one of the individual letters. Uh, replacing it will be very simple. Simply take it down, put up a new one, or take it down, fix the light, put it back up. Today, we, we have the same thing, but we're using neon inside of that to rings that, uh, that still exists. <coughs> So that's basically the look, uh, how, what we could do uh, during uh, the, the nighttime uh, using these lightings. And again, you see the matte finish and the, uh, and the polished stainless steel. Uh, this overall project, um, we have, Robert's talked to three different uh, fabricators and uh, here in town, people we've worked to past in Ohio, uh, Robert, I think you, uh, so Offenhauser, uh, people who did our, our uh, arches, uh, and then some people that did a lot of the, the early work back in the 90s, uh, and we have, uh, uh, by the way, that's a pretty serious job there, um, we have put together an estimate of what we think it's going to cost. It's interesting that we spent a, a bit more than $4 million on doing the six arches as well. We are proposing to you, if we go forward, that this is for six arches, I mean six rings, that you can't do the four on Post Oak Boulevard and not ha and, and have something that looks different at Sage and West Diamond or Sage and West Diamond. And so this is, uh, this is the cost uh, for all six of those. In 1992, best we can remember and find record uh, th that uh, the six cost uh, about $300,000 a piece. And uh, th we're looking at an estimate now of about $665,000 for those. What we would do if you authorize us to go forward is that uh, we would begin, uh, we'd finalize the package with fabrication is the first thing coming back in, doing the lighting, the lighting control. Installation is a big job. That changing the poles themselves so that the new locations of the ring, uh, <coughs> sort of bringing the poles to the condition they need to be in. And then ongoing uh, soft cost inspections and things like that of the wells as it's being fabricated. Um, we have, within the organization, the district has the resources uh, with cash and then borrowing some money to actually uh, finalize the pro our project uh, to go forward and to build this. We have carried it in our budget for a couple of years. And what we're asking today is that please may we go forward basically within the parameters of this. We would come back to you if you allow us to go forward with each of these contracts so that you would be approving before we actually go forward, you get to vote on that and, and approve the final. Any questions?
the diameter of the ring the same as before, or did they expand proportionately with the, the increase in the intersection? That was a, that was a big question. Uh, and, and in the end, the designers felt that the 40-foot diameter worked and was good. That median uh, out in the middle where the transit way is is a, it, it about 46 feet wide. So I, it, it will it will look right from their from their design sense. And uh, and so no, we did not do a 60 or something like that. We did look at it, but I think that the conclusion was it wasn't something we needed. I got a question about the, the type. Is it big enough to be able to see it look smaller than the type was on the other? It might be uh, a, a little smaller than what is out there today, uh, but the designers felt like that, uh, that it really was sufficient. In fact, this is the larger of the two types that the designers really were sort of pushing for us to look at. So, I think because they're internally illuminated, you're going to see them uh, well at night, and in the daytime, they are basically white with translucent uh, glass or acrylic that will be in there. So I, I appreciate the question. Uh, that has been much discussed, but I think in terms of the overall design, uh, you if you make it too much larger, you begin to quote unquote, hang, hang a sign, if you will, on the ring. And so what we're trying to do is keep the letters kind of an integral part of that eight inch ring. Yeah, but the design is beautiful. It's just the functionality of being able to see what the street name is and see. So, okay. And, and I will say that at every one of our intersections, we have those internally illuminated signs on the traffic signal arm. Uh, and I will tell you, it's funny, back in the 1990s when we first hung the first rings up, uh, the designers were very concerned because you couldn't read the lettering quite so well. And then they, we literally came to the board meeting when, before the board meeting was over. They said, well, this isn't a sign. This is an object of art, right? Uh, and so that sort of led to us putting the signs of the actual street where the signals were. Right. And Jonathan, you have questions? Thanks, Dan. Could these be at Thanksgiving? I don't think so. Robert, what do you, uh, the fo following Thanksgiving? <laughs> our intent, our intent is to do the first, to do the first one. Uh, Robert, you know, look, there's trade-offs. I think we're gonna learn something by building one, installing one. Um, Is that the same as which one? Uh, well, yeah. Well, which one are you gonna choose? Well. Uh, we could bid it out and see if we wanted it the most. But, I mean, th there are only a couple of places where we really run into problems um, of where Hidalgo shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, Westheimer, Dillard Corner, there's quite a bit of property right there. We visited with them about the possibility. Uh, San Felipe, Whole Foods, that's a very big corner right there. We might could have... I mean, we're going to bring these in in something like uh, four different pieces, put them together there. But that's that's a couple of week, three week kind of time frame, and then from there lift and install. Yes, sir. I thought you were on this. Do you have to vote on something? You have to vote on this. Okay. If you will. Are you making a motion? Motion to vote on this. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's even better. <laughs> How about a motion? A, yes. A, a motion to authorize us to move forward? Motion is yes. You're a good man. Second. There's a second. Jonathan moved. Uh, Steve was seconded. Kendall. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And before you walk out the door, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, uh, sounds like the motion carries. Okay. I want it very quick because Jonathan needs to leave. Uh, we got two things. We're asking you to uh, allow us to enter into a contract with someone to uh, do our crosswalk striping. Uh, we. We courted everybody in town. We really only got one proposal. We even negotiated those prices down. But it is our recommended uh, recommendation that we go with Battersman, and we are using that. And uh, it is included in our capital budget for this year. We budgeted hundred thousand dollars. I don't know that we'll use. That may be a couple years, couple paintings worth. But we'll see. Could I get a motion? I move to approve contract Sorry. with Battersman. 
Steve. Second. Steve moved and um, uh, Kurt seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Last thing. Okay. Last thing. Motion uh, carries. A key, a key vote. Uh, Delia, if you go to the next one. It, it is uh, entering into an agreement with the city of Houston. So, no, that's not for this that's not that's not an organization. No, Thank you. Right. We're <laughs> done. We're done. Oh, we're done. Yeah. All right. Thanks, John. Nice to see you. Uh, is this the point at which I say, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have nothing else? I All right. Well, sorry for the heroic from Nashville, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Thanks all of you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.